Okay, I, I'll get, uh, get started now. Um, so uh, next up uh, is myself, uh, Ed, Ed Pence, Executive Director of Crossref, and then uh, we'll have uh, Ginny Hendricks following. Then we'll have lunch, and then we'll have more, more Crossref uh, after lunch in the afternoon. So we're going to uh, divide it up into some nice, uh, nice bite-sized chunks So today, uh, I'm going to just give a very brief high-level overview of a, of a few things. Uh, my theme today is talking about uh, growth and change at, at Crossref. Over the last year, uh, we've seen uh, a lot of change, uh, a lot of growth, and uh, Crossref is celebrating its 15th anniversary. Uh, but this is actually uh, the 16th annual meeting. Uh, the first one was in uh, the year 2000 and I've been at every single one. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, it's been great, actually. Uh, it's gone by very quickly. Uh, it's, it's, it's always exciting. There's, there's always new things uh, to do, new things to discuss. Uh, as part of our uh, 15th anniversary, uh, we invited uh, former board members and, and officers, uh, many of them who are, are here today, so welcome uh, to, the, uh, to the old timers. I guess I have to classify myself amongst the old timers as well. Uh, but it's great to see everybody here. And um, <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to cover, uh, first of all, I want to talk about changes in the Crossref team. Uh, a lot of Crossref success is due to the great team uh, that we have. And uh, there have been a lot of changes uh, in the team over the last, uh, last year. So as of uh, uh, December uh, 14th, uh, we will have uh, 29 uh, people at Crossref. We've got two, two joining in uh, December. Uh, so this is up 21% uh, uh, from last year. So that's uh, a pretty good, pretty good growth. But uh, it's interesting to note that um, uh, nine of them, uh, nine of our uh, current staff, uh, or about 31%, are new since last year. So that's uh, bringing lots of uh, new blood into the, into the organization. So that's obviously replacing uh, people who've left as well as uh, new, new positions that have been added uh, during the year. Uh, and um, importantly, uh, we've uh, brought on two new directors, uh, I'm pleased to say, who you'll be hearing from uh, a little bit uh, later. And this was uh, a strategic decision uh, to have a better organizational structure to deal with the growth and change that Crossref has been, uh, been experiencing. The two new positions, just to note, I think because they capture some of the themes that Crossref is going to be working on over the next, uh, next year, uh, are uh, we have a newly created position of a, of a UI designer, uh, which is going to be a, a great addition. It's not a position we've ever had before at, at Crossref. And we heard yesterday uh, from um, um, uh, Martin Eve about uh, experiences as a scholar publisher dealing with the Crossref deposit system and some of the uh, things that could be improved there, uh, which has a lot to do with uh, user interface uh, design. Uh, but also we have a new product manager uh, joining us in, in Oxford, uh, and this is because uh, uh, Rachel Lamy is moving over to do uh, international uh, outreach. We're growing uh, a huge amount in internationally, so she's moving teams and we're bringing in somebody to uh, uh, to, uh, to replace her. Uh, so those are all exciting changes, but to give you a sense, the overall sense now of Crossref as, as an organization, here's a high-level high level chart um, that we've now got our uh, finance and operations team, uh, the technology team, strategic initiatives, uh, member and community outreach, and uh, product, uh, product management. So we've got a really good structure in place, really a great team of people. Uh, and we're going to be doing lots of uh, exciting stuff over the next year. And uh, we also uh, have uh, some uh, new positions budgeted uh, for next year, uh, three, three new positions. And um, we've got uh, two developers uh, joining the strategic initiatives and technology teams because obviously doing new things, uh, we've got to ha have developers to do new things. But also uh, we are continuing to improve and enhance existing services as well. Uh, and we also have... Um, uh, uh, a membership relations person uh, budgeted for uh, 2016. This is because we're also with DET, which you'll be hearing about uh, a little bit later, uh, and DUL, and some of our other uh, project uh, products um, are being, uh, you know, we have more use and more interaction with, uh, with our non-members. 
And so we want to uh, expand and support that um, uh, area a little, little, little bit more, sort of a account management type, uh, type role uh, there. So this is the uh, Crossref organizational chart. It's getting sort of too big to show uh, in this, but all, all the slides today will be available. So if you do want to go back and look at this in a little bit more detail, it, it, it'll give you a sense of uh, uh, how, how the organization is growing and changing. But this is uh, the Crossref team last night having a, a team dinner. This is 20, 23 of the current 27 people. So plotting world domination in a, uh, a dark room uh, over, over dinner. But we had a very nice meal. And because we're distributed, it's nice to get everybody together. So just to touch on a, a couple of the other areas of, of growth and change, we've got, of course, the content coming into the system. Uh, 77.3 million uh, content items. That's up 10% uh, from last year. So again, you think kind of maturing system and all of that, but really it's, uh, we're still seeing a lot of, lot of growth, and it's across a whole range of content types. So of course, uh, this is roughly in order of the, the amount of content. Of course, journals is a big, big part of what we have, uh, but books, conference proceedings, technical reports, theses and dissertation standards, uh, databases, and uh, components. These are the main uh, content types, components being figures and tables uh, from uh, journal articles uh, being, uh, being registered. So things are uh, really expanding on, on the content front. Uh, membership uh, continues to grow. Um, as we heard from Juan before, uh, a lot of our new members are, uh, use OJS, but a lot of them are small. Uh, and there are um, what we start to think of as uh, organizations that publish. So these are organizations that may not see themselves as publishers. And that gets to this issue of best practice that came up before, that one of the issue, issues that Crossref is looking at and why we're doing more international outreach is to uh, convey that uh, best practice to these new organizations that are joining. But we're uh, over 5,300 uh, participating uh, publishers in the Crossref system. So far this year, uh, over 1,300 uh, new members so far this year. That's 30% growth uh, from last year. They're all, uh, almost all in the 275, the lowest fee category. They're very small uh, publishers and large, largely international growth. But I think that's just a sign of the health of Crossref and the inclusivity of the, uh, of the system. On the website, we publish these new organizations. And I thought it was worth just putting up a couple of slides of, of the last few weeks of the organizations that have, added, uh, have joined, uh, joined Crossref. So if you look at some of these, a real, a real mixture, really, really interesting set of organizations. But I think it gives, if you just look at that, it gives a flavor of the, the types of organizations that are uh, uh, joining, uh, joining Crossref. And having this, uh, these organizations join our community and have that content uh, are uh, part of the linking network and participating in all the other services we have is really, uh, uh, really great. And some of these organizations now are joining via what we call sponsoring affiliates. So Crossref in many different places in the world, uh, we, we team up with uh, local partners. Uh, this happens uh, in many different areas. For instance, uh, uh, California Digital Library uh, with their Easy ID service, they are a sponsoring publisher, so bringing in library. Uh, publishers within the U.S., but also in Brazil. We have an arrangement with uh, ABEC there, the Association of Brazilian Science Editors. Uh, Korea, we have a number of uh, uh, partners, CAMG uh, being one of them. So lots of organizations join and stream streamlines administration and support in those, in those uh, organizations. But still, just, just one of the issues we have is, you know, uh, 1,300 new members so far this year. Uh, and, and dealing with that uh, is, is always a challenge, but a good one, a good one to have. I wanted to touch a little bit on uh, governance. Uh, we had a business meeting uh, this morning where uh, new board members uh, were elected. We, we, do that, uh, we do that every year. Uh, but I, and so uh, we have uh, ACM, Hindawi, Taylor and Francis, Sage, and uh, Wiley uh, uh, elected to three-year terms uh, on the board. Uh, they're joining, uh, or rejoining in this, in this case, uh, the rest of the organizations on the board. Uh, the board's critical to uh, overseeing uh, Crossref uh, 
uh, strategic development and operations. These are the other organizations, and you can see that uh, the board has uh, changed over the last few years, as well as the membership has changed, and uh, we've got a very uh, a representative set of, of organizations. We have some continuity with the organizations who founded Con uh, Crossref, but also uh, new smaller, uh, smaller organizations, different types of university presses, uh, different uh, business models, uh, all represented on, on the Crossref board. So the board, uh, I wanted to talk about this because I want to just mention this issue of uh, uh, it's very important that organizations, Crossref members, get involved in Crossref governance and want to talk a little bit about how that, how you can, how you can go about uh, getting involved, uh, but also that we're going to be uh, updating the information uh, when Crossref updates its website and providing a little bit more um, information on, on governance and how things work. But uh, the board has a number of standing committees, an executive committee, a nominating committee, and an audit committee. The nominating committee performs a very important role. Uh, there are um, uh, always uh, two non, at least two non-board members uh, who are uh, on the nominating committee, as well as three who are not uh, three board members who are not up for re-election. And the nominating committee meets and really gives consideration to board composition, type of organizations that are on the board, uh, geographic uh, spread, those types of issues. And so uh, each year between really January and July, the nominating committee does its work and then proposes, uh, proposes a slate, uh, and that's what was uh, uh, voted on uh, and approved, uh, approved, this, approved this morning. Uh, and uh, th as I said, this does include general members, so if anybody's interested in uh, participating in the nominating committee, talk to, uh, to me, any of the Crossref staff, any of the, uh, the Crossref board who have uh, 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 name cards to uh, indicate that they are on actually on the on the on the board of directors. So the board uh, works hard during the year. Back in uh, July, we had a facilitated uh, facilitator uh, help us working um, uh, on strategic issues. We broke up into groups, uh, breakout groups, and had a lot of really useful uh, discussions that then. Uh, the staff took and fed into planning for the 2016 budget, but uh, this is um, uh, the board uh, hard at work, and this is at the end of the meeting. With uh, You can see all the white uh, flip chart pages behind the board, so a uh, huge thank you to the board, and uh, if you're interested in getting involved in governance, uh, again, please please talk to uh, uh, to me or any of the Crossref staff or the existing board. Um, in addition to those other committees I mentioned, uh, Crossref has uh, a whole set of committees that are made up of, of, of our members. So we have a membership and fees committee that actually does important work uh, looking at Crossref fees and um, uh, as we're developing new services. This group looks at, uh, we'll be looking at, for instance, DET uh, uh, is one of the uh, big things that they'll be doing over the next uh, few months. But for all the existing Crossref services and projects, We've got, uh, uh, got committees uh, for them, cross-check, cross-mark, text and data mining, and now DET and uh, DUL. So we're always looking for people to uh, participate. So you can always uh, get in touch with the chairs of those committee, committees, which are on, uh, on the website, or again, talk to Crossref, cross, Crossref staff. Uh, we also have slightly more informal uh, groups when we're developing pilots, doing new things. We often get a working group. Uh, together, that can be uh, publishers who are interested in doing something, just kind of get together and, and form different, different groups. And so we have a, a taxonomy group. Uh, there was a breakfast uh, this morning for, uh, for that group. Often these groups work on uh, web uh, uh, conference calls rather than in-person in meetings, so they're always very distributed. But uh, you'll be hearing about some of these things today, linked clinical trials. Uh, we have a standards technical working group that's been doing some important work this year on expanding how Crossref deals with with uh, standards, uh, book interest group, uh, the funder advisory group, we used to be the fundref advisory group. So these are all avenues for uh, getting involved, and uh, so I would encourage everybody to uh, uh, to look and get uh, get involved. So uh, some other areas of change uh, to touch on are uh, uh, preprints. The in July the Crossref board. Uh, uh, voted to accept preprints into the Crossref uh, system. And so the uh, updated rules uh, governing uh, how we're going to accept preprints are being uh, reviewed by the board tomorrow. If that all goes ahead, then 
really by the end of the year, beginning of next year, Crossref is going to be accepting DOIs for preprints. That's been the one type of uh, content that we've never, uh, that we've explicitly ruled out uh, accepting. And so the rules tomorrow are going to be um, uh, clarifying best practice. So there are going to be rules around uh, assigning DOIs to preprints that involve requirements for clearly labeling. It's going to be a, a content type. It'll be uh, uh, a key thing will be that the preprints will then have to link to the published uh, version, the version of record of the of the article. Um, and we're going to be making clear some other things as a result of this that about uh, DOIs can be assigned at acceptance. Uh, that DOI then gets maintained uh, through the uh, publishing process and uh, the DOI doesn't change then for the uh, formerly published version, the, uh, the version of record. Uh, and then also we're going to be, as part of these rules, just clarifying uh, the issues around assigning separate DOIs to what's called duplicative and derivative content such as republications, uh, translations, annotated copies. So, so this is a, this is a, a big change. Uh, the board debated it uh, uh, quite a bit, and uh, I think it's just recognizing that uh, a number of Crossref members um, uh, publish uh, preprints, and they are scholarly objects. And uh, if we get them as part of the citation network, uh, we they they can be included in a in a, in a proper way, uh, but. Um, uh, yeah, so look for more information coming about, uh, about preprints. <coughs> the other area I wanted to touch on was um, uh, uh, up next, Ginny's going to be talking about our new uh, branding, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, everything looks really great, and uh, her team did a fantastic job getting everything ready under very tight deadlines for this meeting, uh, including paper, paper airplanes, which uh, paper airplanes, which have proven to be very useful today. Um, and, uh, but we're also changing how we talk about Crossref's services. And uh, we're going to be renaming some things. And I think that uh, when we talk about the branding, it's important. It's not just visual, but we've discussed a lot about how we talk about Crossref and how we can clarify and, 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 and simplify. And one of the things that we're going to be doing that I just wanted to highlight is um, changing uh, the name of the Fundref, uh, what we refer to as uh, we've been referring to as as Fundref, so we're kind of debranding Fundref. It had its own logo, it had, it had its own name, but it's just going to be uh, funding data, right? Crossref gets a lot of metadata in, a lot of metadata out. We uh, one of those things that we metadata we're getting in now is funding data, and uh, that's both uh, funding and grant grant information. So we will just be talking about funding data. And then the registry is going to be the Crossref Open uh, Funder Registry, which is obviously a, a piece of that. And one of the reasons we're changing this is because uh, Fundref really caused uh, confusion. And it was amazing how many times uh, we came across uh, Fundref being referred to as a separate thing from Crossref or a separate system, even to the extent of being at a meeting and somebody saying when a Crossref person was there, oh, does anybody know if there's somebody from Fundref here? And uh, really uh, surprising things. But so we, we, as part of our new branding, we're going to be very much more careful about how we name things. And we're not going to do cross something or something ref anymore. So those, those days, unfortunately, are gone. But you know, it, it, unfortunately, we had a lot of good names in the store, like uh, cross dress, cross, you know, whatever. Um, so you know, that, that, those days are over, unfortunately. But we've got a, a, a bright future, I think, uh, uh, with a much clearer message. So um, uh, we want to focus also on, you know, obviously f getting funder IDs and grant numbers as, as part of the funding data is really important. But we're also collecting very other information, and we don't want to take away from that with authenticated ORCID IDs um, that enables the ORCID auto update functionality, uh, which Chuck will talk about later. But licensing information, full text URLs for text and data mining, cross mark metadata even abstracts now. So there's a lot of metadata uh, that Crossref is uh, collecting, and we want to focus on that as part of our, our, our best practice. So talking a little bit about what's in store coming, uh, coming in the future. This morning, we heard about the financials. Uh, but I did just want to highlight here uh, in the 2016 budget, uh, we have uh, uh, $7.2 million uh, in revenue, 7% increase from uh, what we're projecting for the end of year 20, 2015. Uh, so a good steady increase, but we are also increasing expenses 21 
uh, percent, so a big increase in expenses, mostly staff costs, but it's also for a new website, uh, the rebranding rollout. Uh, so you can see here we'll have about a $200,000 surplus, uh, which is uh, smaller than this year, but still a, still a reasonable surplus. And um, as Bernie, our treasurer, mentioned this morning, this is really showing that we're investing in the Crossref system. We're investing in uh, doing new things, uh, improving how we're doing existing things. And uh, I think that's, uh, again, a really healthy sign um, that, that uh, uh, we're we're investing that money and some of that 21 percent increase comes out of the July board meeting where we were talking about all the things that Crossref uh, could do and really focusing on those priorities and then that factors into the in into the budget so we're really uh, putting things in place so we can deliver on that uh, mission our, our mission and the strategic goals uh, that the board uh, laid out for us so we'll have be having a full rollout of the new branding and communications uh, new website, new deposit process, DET, DUL, linked clinical trials, ORCID auto update, participation reports, international outreach, lots of really uh, fantastic uh, stuff uh, coming up for, uh, for 2016, and you'll be hearing about that from uh, my colleagues uh, coming up. I just wanted to highlight on one uh, strategic area. Crossref, of course, works with many other organizations. Uh, data site on linking um, publications and data. Uh, organizations who use our metadata, uh, Chorus, uh, Share, uh, other organizations. But one, one area that the board's going to be talking about uh, tomorrow that we've started to talk, uh, have some conversations with ORCID, Data Site, and, and others is about institutional identifiers. This is an area that has been, um, uh, we've sorted out uh, content identifiers. Uh, we sorted out uh, people identifiers via, via ORCID, and institutional identifiers are uh, really an area that we need to try and tackle. There are obviously institutional identifiers out there. Um, uh, Ringgold, uh, Orgref, uh, Digital Science has launched their, their grid uh, project, but they're all sort of slightly, uh, ISNIs uh, are out there, but they're all sort of taking pieces of the issue, and we really need to bring something uh, together, I think. So Crossref is going to be getting involved in these discussions uh, and helping to facilitate, uh, you know, progress in this area. And I wanted to give a quote, which I just came across uh, yesterday from Richard Padley uh, at, from Semantico. Uh, uh, but he, this was in the digital, a digital science publication called Perspectives, where people talk about uh, scholarly publishing. And I just thought it really summed up really nicely why Crossref would get involved, but also, you know, capturing some of the, some of the mission about what, what what Crossref does. So an opportunity for the scholarly community to come together and address the challenge of providing a stable, persistent identifier for institutions. So it's going to involve a lot of stakeholders, uh, but a standard alone is insufficient for success. Both ORCID and Crossref demonstrate the need for organizational infrastructure, services, and outreach in order to drive uptake and uh, ensure uh, success. So I think that uh, uh, sums up things uh, very very nicely, and it actually sums up um, uh, some more general principles about how Crossref uh, uh, and ORCID as operate as as well. So look for more information about that uh, next year. There's a little bit. Uh, there's a link there um, to the uh, to the full to the full article. So that was a <coughs> very brief introduction. Uh, what I'm going to do though now is. Um, uh, hand over in a minute to um, uh, to Ginny Hendricks uh, and let the Crossref uh, staff actually give you all the really uh, really interesting interesting stuff. So uh, I talked about growth and change. We don't want growth and growth for growth's sake, but we want more valuable growth. Crossref fulfilling its mission, uh, doing more things and change, but it's always uh, uh, thoughtful change. So thank you very much. Thank you.